Oh, there he goes. Johnny Appleseed, planting trees and being one of America's first weirdos. But this legendary frontier man was much more than the myths that make him. He was a true American hero and a man who helped settle the West in a remarkable way. Hello and welcome to Remember Remember, the show all about histories, mysteries and figments of your imagination. Is this real? Are we real? I know I'm real, but you might just be some sort of terrible and sexy dream. Well, at least it's a sexy dream. I was talking to the listeners, Paula. Well, I know, well if, if same same statement stands. Uh, okay. <laughs> I am joined, allegedly, by Paula not tall enough to tell tales Deming. Oh, <laughs> and I'm just hearsay, nothing more than a story told by a crazy babushka huffing mushrooms in the woods. <laughs> That's Matthew. The line between fact and fiction in the annals of history is often blurry. Even when something is true, it's always been embellished by some monk in a cave somewhere or some roaming Greek playwright who's got an audience to entertain as well as a history to tell. I mean... Plato told everyone about Atlantis, a story that he probably heard from some Egyptian historians, but I want to concentrate today on one man who I thought was just a work of fiction, but turns out was very, very much real. Yeah, Johnny Appleseed. Paula, Johnny Appleseed, real. <laughs> did you know this? I think I did. I think I just assumed he was real. Maybe I didn't properly know, but I think I was like, yeah, that's a real person who did a real thing. Yeah. Well, William Tell isn't real, and he's another person to do with apples from history. William Tell isn't real? Turns out not. Okay, well, what about Sir Isaac Newton? That's a that's a person to have to do with apples in history. Is he real? He is real. Gravity is a fiction. Oh. We're turning into a conspiracy podcast. You can't have gravity on a flat earth. It doesn't make sense in the model. <laughs> Jeez, <Paula. Louise>. so, <laughs> so it's the early 1800s in a wild and expansive time for what would become these here United States of the Root and Tootin USA. Yeehaw! Yeehaw indeed. Go West was the name of the game. And also, try not to die while you do it. You saying yeehaw in that accent is a delight, is what I'll say. Ye and or ha. <laughs> we did a two-part episode, actually, on some of these such brave pioneers who did this journey, the Donner Party, if you've not listened to that. Yeah. And out there in the wilds of soon-to-be America, there was a man called John Chapman who might just have beat you to where you were going. So John Chapman, or as he was known, Johnny Appleseed, is portrayed as a tall man dressed in nothing more than rags, sowing apple seeds out of a hessian sack wherever he roamed, wearing a cooking pot on his head and a smile on his sun-beaten face. Wow, that is like, now you'd be like, cross to the other side of the road. C cross to the other side. Just don't make eye contact. I know there's no roads, but let's move to the other side of this prairie. <laughs> Though author Rosella Rice is meant to have met Chapman in the last years of his life and described him as, quote, his personal appearance was as singular as his character. He was a small, chunked man. Sorry, what? <laughs> he was a I don't know chunked what chunked man? means. <laughs> chunked. I mean, kind of, maybe it means hunk. Who knows? Maybe it means chunky, like chunky, like fat. I No, it certainly doesn't mean that, I don't think. He was a small, chunked man, quick and restless in his motions and conversation. His beard, though not long, was unshaven, and his hair was long and dark, and his eye black and sparkling. He was Santa Claus. No. He lived the roughest life and often slept in the woods. His clothing was mostly old, being generally given to him in exchange for apple trees. He went barefooted and often traveled miles through the snow in that way. He wore on his head a tin utensil, which answered both as a cap and a mush pot. That sounds like a guy who's got it put together in my book. I mean, that's minimalism. He's like Maria Kondo of his time, right? He's like, like, does this pot bring me joy? Yes. Does this hat bring me joy? No. So I'll just use the pot. 
as the hat. So actually, there's a quick side note on author Rosella Rice, who I found very interesting as well. She wrote hundreds of articles for magazines. That's how she made her living. But she wrote under different names. And she had different characters that were... So there's Pip Sissy Way, Pipsy Potts. Oh, my. Who was for... She was for tutorials and recipes. Aunt Chatty Brooks, who ran a boarding house for young women. And of course, Mrs. Sam Starkey, who was described as an elderly gossip with a sense of humor. This is hilarious. All these different personas for the different things that she was writing. But she was best known for her poetry, the poetry that featured Johnny Appleseed. And she's probably the reason Appleseed became a household name and legend. And while a lot of her other writings were sarcastic and satirical, she wrote an article promoting bloomer dresses, which is good. I'll read one. I'm going to read out one of the most popular poems just because I liked it. It's called Spirits of the Wildwood. And this is a nice poem. Okay. Where the wanderer's foot hath seldom trod, where scarce a thought unless of God could fill the heart, oh, then and there, the wildwood spirits fill the air. Within the glen, upon the hill, the waterfall, the tinking rill. Within the vale, in bosom deep, by trees and vines and rocky steep, alone in deep, sweet solitude, dwell the wild spirits of the wood. So she was incredibly talented. Yeah. Now, the issue is, of course, that Johnny Appleseed's life and real life are somewhat blurred. But we do know where he was born. This is Leominster, Massachusetts, on September 26, 1774. Although I imagine the Americans might have actually called it Leominster. I would call it Lemster because it's the same as Lemster near me. Yeah, I actually don't know because I haven't been there. It's they could go it could go either way here. Yeah. Actually people in Massachusetts seem to pronounce things correctly in my books. Like Worcester's Worcester. It's because they they got their names. Yeah. From like if you go to New England, there's a ton of stuff that's just English names of places. Because it's New England. You're like, oh, okay, that makes sense. Appleseed's father had fought in the Revolutionary War under George Washington, no less. His mother at about that time died of tuberculosis. And it's with his stepmother that Johnny would get 10 more siblings. Whoa, that is a lot of kids. Paula, thems were the times. Yeesh. Man, that poor woman, she's probably like, can I just get some birth control, please? Somebody invent this. What do I do? What do I, What does a girl got to do here to get some birth control? The thing is, I feel like this type of birth rate was more of a trying to... You're playing poker with morbidity, right? Because not all these kids are going to make it. Yeah, and you might not make it through the True. through the birth. It's But what are you going to do? Just not have sex? That's just not reality. Well, I've been living that life. Johnny trains to become an orchardist. And by the turn of the century, he's off on his way to plant his first orchard. Orchard might be a slightly excessive term to what was really a nursery of apple trees and peach trees. Hmm. And why is he doing this? Maybe a mission to make the world a better place. Or just a mild eccentricity. Or maybe for the same reason as most when going west. Money. Money. That's what I want. It's what I want. You see, when moving out west, something that was being highly pushed by the government, among other people, was that whatever claim you staked need to, was to make it seem more real, seem more serious. They said the best way to do that was to plant an orchard. Oh, interesting. And this was a comfort to those coming after you. To see the wild, wild west tamed and settled. And apple trees were a resource and just a comfort to many. You may think, though, that Johnny's just some guy wandering around planting trees like some sort of happy idiot. But that really wasn't the case at all. The Ohio Company of Associates were, they're essentially a bunch of realtors. Hmm. They had an incentive where anyone who wanted to create a homestead off in the wilds would receive 100 acres. The only thing they needed to do other than... Everything, I suppose, needed to live on the frontier was to plant 50 apple trees and 20 peach trees. And this was a huge opportunity for Johnny. And he knew it. Why? Do you know why they... It was just because of the government thing being like plant trees? Or was did they have some other incentive, this group of realtors? Well, the reason was is that you, plant, you don't plant trees to move on quickly. If you're planting trees, it's kind of a statement that you're going to be staying put mm-hmm. where you are. And if you're a realtor trying to work with land and loans and all this type of stuff and the government owns the land, you want people who are serious. Mm. And this 
tree planting idea was a way to do that. To get people to put down roots, one might say. One could say that. <laughs> but this also was a great demonstration of the taming of the Wild mm. West. You know, this was like, oh, well, there's apple trees and peach trees. We're going to be all right, you know? So this business plan was far from a get-rich-quick scheme. But essentially, what Johnny did was, staying ahead of where pioneers were most likely to settle, he'd get there first and plant a bunch of trees. He'd fence them off and to protect them, leave them in the care of a homesteader, and then go off again ahead of the crowd to do the same. He then later returned to these trees knowing that the homesteaders and pioneers needed to have 50 apple trees and 20 peach trees to get their 100 acres off the government. Mm. Then he sold them the trees. <gasps> Interesting. It just expediated it for the people who were moving there. It's like, we could just buy 70 trees right now off this and guy. And then we have the land and we don't have to plant all the trees. And he was a generous kind of guy though. When people didn't have enough money, the idea of Johnny Appleseed being a generous fellow it was true. He helped people out. And the good thing was is that he actually owned a thousand acres of land personally through this pursuit. Wow. Because all he had to do was plant the trees on that ground. And he's like, that's mine now because I planted the trees there. So he owns a lot of land and he's getting he's gathering resources. And he's also a massive wealth of knowledge to these people. Mm. Yeah, because he knows how to survive out in these conditions, right? Because he's doing it all on his own. He's like, look, first thing you got to do, headgear. Most important step of making it out on the frontier. Look, when a bear comes to attack, you think it's getting through this thing? Clonk, clonk, as he knocks on his pot. Cowboy hat? Oh, I see what you're saying. Sorry, I see. You weren't going to hold it in place with that. I get what you're doing. That's what you're saying. That this is ar rudimentary armor. This is what you're going yeah, with the yes. tin hat. Yeah, yeah. But Johnny Appleseed was certainly a curious guy, something emphasized by the time he lived in. There weren't many vegetarians among the pioneers of the day, which is unsurprising, but Johnny was. Huh. He belonged to a fairly obscure religious group, the Church of New Jerusalem, hmm. which was started by a guy called Emanuel Swedenborg. Okay. Swedenborg. So he was what I think is a lovely term, a Swedenborgian. <laughs> A Swedenborgian, yes. So I looked up this religion to find out the weird things that they believe, but it seems that they are just the most reasonable Christians going. So slightly different from our other vegetarian religious friends, Simon Graham and his graham crackers. Uh, <laughs> yeah, exactly. They're like, sleep on a hard bed, wear a pot on your head, that'll teach you. That'll make that'll you suffer. That'll keep the devil out. <laughs> It's a proto-aluminum foil hat, you know what I mean? Exactly, yeah. The, well, the thing that the Swedenborgians believed, really, the aspect that separated them was their rejection of the Holy Trinity as three separate entities and rather just aspects of one God, essentially. Huh, interesting. Philosopher Immanuel Kant wrote hmm. about the Swedenborgians. There was an incident where S Swedenborg's house almost burnt down along with all his work and writings. And though Swedenborg was in Gothenburg back in Sweden. He's meant to have felt and seen this happen from 300 miles away. Oh my goodness. And while Kant kind of derided him publicly, he's known to have admired him in private and didn't say anything about him because he was worried that others would have mocked him for it. Interesting. It's Johnny Appleseed's pious nature that does kind of leave room for some more uncomfortable aspects of his life yeah it's in the realm of hearsay okay that he didn't marry because he couldn't find a woman pure enough mm. but it's certainly true that he believed that he would find a wife in heaven after his death or maybe it was just like tough to it's hard to meet people who are like a, a forever partner when you're just like moving around planting trees all the time like not staying in one place that, you know, I don't know. Yeah. Who, how it's difficult to find someone to match you, that lifestyle. Also, he wears a pot on his head. <laughs> and rags and no shoes, you know. Like, uh, you know, uh, there's a lot to get through to love the personality. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> there is one story of him in agreement with a pioneer family, kind of raising a girl to be virtuous enough for him but then she's seen flirting with some boys and he called this engagement off though good gross but this to me feels a bit 
like the kind of story you tell about a weird old pious man. Yeah. You don't, that you don't like because he's more virtuous than yeah. you, perhaps. He makes you feel bad because you see him and you're like, wow, he behaves better than I do. And that inherently makes me feel kind of bad about the things I do that I already know I shouldn't be doing. Exactly. So whether this is true or not, yeah. we're not sure. It's difficult to separate out some of the taller tales from the stranger aspects of his real life. This guy's weird. Just that much is clear. <laughs> But maybe he's not creeper weird. And even of the time, this wouldn't have been an unbelievable type of arrangement to have someone in mind for marriage yeah. when she's of age. That's yes. not an unusual thing for that time. It just isn't. That's very true. Yeah. So there are other things that st stood Johnny Chapman out, Mr. Appleseed out from the average pioneer. He wore rags, as we said. That's pretty well documented. But... Not because he couldn't afford clothes. He seems to choose this way of life yeah. for himself. When sat by a fire one night, noticing mosquitoes burning in the flames, he decided that his comfort shouldn't come at the detriment to another living creature and wow. chose to put the fire out. He's one of these types. He's a hippie. He's a hippie. He seems kind of almost Buddhist in his beliefs in, in that regard. It's funny because I went to college with a guy. I went to college in the North Carolina mountains where it got cold and snowed quite a bit. And there was a guy who w everyone knew who he was on campus. He had long hair and a beard. Uh, he never wore a coat. He w carried, instead of a backpack, his a briefcase to class, and he never wore shoes, even in the snow. Maybe he was a reincarnation of Johnny Appleseed. But like I look at him, and I'm like, that's a hippie. And now I'm like, Johnny Appleseed? Sounds like a lot of people I went to school with. <laughs> So it's winter here while we record this episode. And I tell you what, I was doing some painting and decorating the other day. And my painting and decorating bottoms are like shorts. Right. And I needed to walk my dog, Yaya. And I thought, you know, I'm not changing. I'm going to go put a coat on and walk the dog in my shorts. My first ever excursion as a shorts in winter guy. Wow. Honestly, it was liberating. I think I liked it. Did you get more respect for Johnny Appleseed doing this? Or did you go, yeah, this wasn't so bad? I just think I need to test it out a few more times. <laughs> do I become a shorts in winter guy? I could do that. You could be a shorts in winter guy. You could be. That could be your new identity. I just already don't have much luck with the ladies. And I feel like that's not going to help. <laughs> Look, if you do it confidently, it could be a source of appeal. You know, I've got okay legs. There you go. Showing them off. Appleseed would tend to sick animals. He'd rehabilitate them. There's a case of him finding that a horse was to be put down. And instead, he bought the nearby land and used it as a place to rehabilitate this steed. Then wow. instead of recouping his losses, uh, selling the animal on, he gave it to someone on the proviso that they were a person who was going to be kind to it and treat it fairly. Wow. This was not the style at the time no <laughs> and while tales of him giving up his campfire for bears and tending to a sick wolf who would become his pet or probably folklore rather than history right i don't know that he's got an actual wolf pet that's a little he was truly doing this in the brutal and hardship laden landscape of the frontier west there's a lot of bravery that goes into this yeah yeah not only the bravery that it takes to be a pioneer of any sort, but the bravery to be different to everyone around you. Yes. I feel like. Totally. There's a there's a conviction, I think. Yeah, to be like, I don't care if people think I'm a weirdo. These are the things I believe and those are the things I'm going to do. That's what's going to guide me. Yeah, that is brave. So I just respect the hell out of it, you know? One thing I really love about Johnny Appleseed is that he didn't actually plant apples that were good for eating. I was going to say, how did he get the whole apple thing going? Because apples are weird. They're all basically genetically engineered. The ones that we eat now are all like regular old apples, like crab apples, are not like good. They've had to be cultivated. Well, the apples that he planted were known as spitters. And they were pretty much only good for making cider. Mm. Or at a push, baking with a lot of sugar. Mm. Also by cider, I, I mean alcoholic cider, right. what Americans call hard cider. Right. 
You might think this was a weird thing for a man so pious to be planting, but it made sense because, like in the UK, when you hear stories of like children as young as five who drink two pints of beer a day, but then you realize that the reason for this is, is because beer, which was very low alcohol content by today's standards, was the only drink that had been boiled yeah. in any way. It was the only thing that was actually like safe to drink. You know, uh, there's actually a podcast coming up about the biggest theft in history which is the tea theft out of china and Mm. stuff and that's also about that really helped society because you have to boil the water to make tea you know Mm. but in a way this boiling of the water and drinking very low alcohol content beer just made the water safer to drink in the same way perhaps this was the reason johnny planted cider apples or maybe he just liked to drink he was described at one point as america's dionysus dionysus was the (laughs) greek god of wine (laughs) Wine, vegetation, pleasure, festivities, badness, and wild frenzy. Mm-mm. Which could sum up Johnny Appleseed pretty well, I think. I like that apple cider vinegar was also used for preservation, uh, which, while not as fun of a thing to do, Johnny Appleseed would have known this. And perhaps he was mm-hmm. just helping to prepare the homesteaders for what they had coming up. Also, I'd be very curious, like, are there other kinds of apples at this time to even plant? Like, there really might not be a lot of options. Like I said, the the varieties of apples we have now, it's a very modern thing. They don't just naturally grow. So some of it could also be just like, that's what was available for him to plant. Maybe that was available to him, but there were certainly many wide varieties of eating apples at the time. Especially in Europe, for instance. They would have been available, I think. There are a few other interesting tidbits that really show him in many ways how how Johnny Appleseed influences our world around us even today. He saw the idea of grafting apple trees. <gasps> this is what I was talking about. Yeah, he saw this as harmful. So ultimately, the trees he planted grew more heirloom varieties of apples hmm. instead of the copy-paste grafting methods. So it's thought possible that he's one of the reasons for the American specific varieties of apples that we have today. Hmm. Even though, as we all know, Red Delicious is a garbage the worst, apple. It's the yeah. worst apple. Paula, it's the worst apple. I've never spoken to someone who I've said this to who has disagreed. Yeah, it's garbage. Best apple, by the way, Granny Smith. I'm throwing it out there. They're best for baking. Nope. Best for eating. <laughs> also, I never eat apples. So that's my... So what do you know? <laughs> what, that is, what do I know? <laughs> He's also said to have planted vast quantities of dog fennel for its medicinal properties. Mm. Paula? Dog fennel contains pyrolyzidine alkaloids. Yeah, yeah of course it I does. I have said that. Of course it does. I have said that incorrect, but it can cause liver failure. It's really, really bad. Oh my goodness. Even cattle eat around it. The only thing that eats it are scarlet-bodied wasp moths. Oh my gosh. Who use the toxins to ward off other animals. <laughs> Thanks, Johnny. It's considered an invasive weed, and it smells bad. But no one's perfect, and apples are great for you. <laughs> And peaches. I'm not a fan of peaches, Paula. You're crazy. I don't like slimy fruit. That is an issue that you have. And peaches do have... They're. I like to think of it as juicy, not slimy. They're slimy. They're slimy and hairy. <laughs> I wouldn't call them hairy. They're fuzzy. But you can Gross. peel them. You don't have to eat the peel. No, if I'm eating it, I'm eating it like a man. Oh my gosh. <laughs> uh. One night on his extensive travels at the age of 70, Johnny Chapman contracted pneumonia he made it to a friend's house for one last meal he's said to have read the bible and fallen asleep for the final time rosella rice wrote in 1863 that he died near fort wayne indiana in 1846 or 48 a stranger among strangers who kindly cared for him Mm. he died the death of the righteous calmly and peacefully and with little suffering or pain. So long as his memory lives, will a grateful people say, he went about doing good. It's amazing really when you think about it. There are still trees out there that Johnny Appleseed planted. It is pretty amazing. And you'd never even know that it was him that he put the seed in the ground all those years ago. He also wouldn't, apparently, he owned so much land at the end of it that he he didn't even know where it all was. (laughs) Someone else honestly might have been just been living on that land and been like, I don't know, it's just here. It's mine now. <laughs> and like, 
would never have known. Uh, if he'd have been a different man, a different of different character, he would have owned half of America. Oh yeah, he would have been an absolute landowning capitalist. But I think because he was a good man, instead of becoming a baron, he became a legend. Yeah. His gravesite has been disputed over the years, but it's believed to be in the Archer Park Cemetery in Fort Wayne, Indiana. I mean, the park next to it is called Johnny Appleseed Park. So I'm going to go with that's where it is. <laughs> and you can visit his gravesite, which is marked by a simple headstone for a man who lived a simple but remarkable life. We should go and try and visit that grave. Heck yeah. That would be very cool. It's interesting because I've always wondered, growing up, we had one of our like prayers we learned in Sunday school was the Johnny Appleseed prayer. And I always was kind of like, why is Johnny Appleseed a like figure in my religious life? Like that's I never understood that. It just kind of felt like Americana and sure. OK, but now it makes a lot more sense because he was a religious example. Right. He was someone who yeah. went around and improved the land he lived on, helped people cared for nature, cared for the animals. And yeah, it it all makes sense now. It's so interesting. Like Rosella Rice wrote, he went about doing good. That's what he was known for. And that's remarkable in such a brutal time and environment. He must have been doing a lot of good for that to be what he's known for over the fact that he was barefoot, raggedy pothead man. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Yeah. Trying to shove apples in everybody's mouth, you know? <laughs> Thank you so much for watching this YouTube video. We appreciate you. Make sure that you are subscribed to this channel. Uh, let us know. Do you know the Johnny Appleseed prayer? Let me know in the comments below. Also, give give the video a like. And if you know someone who you think might enjoy this YouTube channel, let them know about it. Share the video around. We'd love to share these weirdo stories with even more people. So, thank you so much, and this episode might be history, but you're, no, that's not, I thought I would try a new, try an outro, and you know, it failed. It failed pretty badly there. I can only say that you should go listen to Joe Strummer's song, Johnny Appleseed, it's one of the greatest songs ever made. All right, go listen, and I'm going to keep working on an outro. Bye, everyone. Bye. Oh, the Lord's been good to me, and so I thank the Lord for giving me the things I need, the sun and the rain and the apple seed. The Lord's been good to me. Amen. 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 I purposely didn't sing a song that's about Johnny Appleseed, but I see that my efforts were wasted.